Genesis chapter 4, verses 9 to 15. And the Lord said to Cain, Where is Abel thy brother? And he said, I know not. Am I my brother's keeper? And God said, What hast thou done? The voice of thy brother's blood cried unto me from the ground. And now art thou cast from the earth, which had opened her mouth to receive thy brother's blood from thy hand. And when thou tillest the ground, it shall not henceforth yield unto thee her strength. A fugitive and a vagabond shall thou be in the earth. And Cain said unto the Lord, My punishment is greater than I can bear. Behold, thou hast driven me out this day from the face of the earth, and from thy face shall I be hid, and I shall be a fugitive and a vagabond in the earth. And it shall come to pass that everyone that findeth me shall slay me. Verse 15, And the Lord said unto him, Therefore, whosoever slayeth Cain, vengeance shall be taken on him sevenfold. And the Lord set a mark upon Cain, lest any find him shall kill him. Praise the Lord. In this Genesis chapter 4, I want to focus our attention to verses 9 to 10. Now, during this serious interrogation, God was interrogating Cain, we encountered three questions. Now, two of those questions were, were asked by God himself, and one of the questions was asked by Cain. Now, these questions are very important. They are important to the unfolding of the story. And those questions are relevant to us. And this is where we are considering this Questions. This is why we are considering this question. And let, let me put it back again this time around, highlighting the question. And the Lord said unto Cain, Where is Abel thy brother? That is the first question. Second question, which is Cain that asked it, and he Cain said, I knew not, am I my brother's keeper? That was the second question. And the third question was asked by God, and he the Lord said, What hast thou done? So those are the three questions that are really important. Where is Abel your brother? Am I my brother's keeper? What hast thou done? Now, Cain committed a crime. He was a criminal. <laughs> Indeed, as it is going to turn out to be, he was a hardened, he was an heartless criminal. No wonder when we read Jude chapter 1, only one chapter, verse 11, he was lumped with this ignoble people. It was lumped with Balaam and Korah. Remember Jude chapter 1 verse 11, Woe unto them, for they had gone in the way of Cain, and ran greedily after the error of Balaam for reward, and perished in the gainsaying of Korah. That's Korah. So you can see the, the, the company that the Bible lumped Cain with. He was indeed a hardened, he was indeed a heartless criminal. That is what he has become. And in our last episode, we touched us on question one and question two. You know, like I said, we are looking at these three questions. We did touch on question one, where, when God asked Cain, where is Abel your brother? And then we touched on question two, which Cain asked, am I my brother's keeper? Today, we will still tarry on question two, okay, because there are still a couple of issues I want us to dig around, a couple of lesson we want to learn as it were from this question Cain as it were was under interrogation that is the illustration that is the picture we can see here it's like Cain has been arrested it's like a criminal that committed a crime that thought he he got away with it but he has been found out and he has been brought into as it were to the police station or is standing in the court Cain was under interrogation and God who is the judge, gave Cain, the criminal, the opportunity to confess to his crime. God gave Cain that opportunity for him to take some responsibility for his action, to at least so, show some remorse, and maybe come to a place of godly sorrow and repentance. But no, that was not the way of Cain. That was not his style. That was not his nature. His way was never that of godly sorrow. His way was not <laughs> that of repentance. His nature and his motivation have been taken over by evil. He has become evil in his very being. And that is why God asked him, where is Abel, your brother? God asked him that question just to give him that opportunity for a place of introspection, for a place of at least being faced with the evil of what he has done and maybe come to a place of taking some responsibility. But no, 
they wouldn't have any of that. What was Cain's response? Cain answered, I know not. <laughs> but the evidence before the court, before all the evidence before the divine court shows that he knows. He basically lied. He said, I know not know, Cain, you know. And then he said, am I my brother's keeper? This was his response. It was all a lie. I know not. But he knew. Then he said, am I my brother's keeper? To which the answer is, yes, Cain, you are your brother's keeper. And if not that he was evil and wicked, he should know. And he didn't need to be reminded that he was his brother's keeper. And we have looked into the very arrogance that made him ask God this type of question, am I my brother's keeper? So we are not going to go back into that. But what about us? Just like Cain, we too, we are our brothers, we are our sisters keeper. Last episode, we mentioned some special group of people that are our brothers, that are our sister. You remember, we mentioned the poor, we mentioned the orphan, we mentioned the widow, we mentioned the worthless, the voiceless, we mentioned the weak. The widow, the poor, the weak, the orphan, the voiceless. These are our brothers. These are our sisters. But we need to ask that question again, which is why we are still tiring on this uh, second question. We still need to ask that question again. But this time, we want to answer it in a more generic way. Who are my brothers? Who are my sisters? Are they just only this special group of people that we've mentioned? Yes, it is those special group of people. But no. Are they just my biological brothers and sisters? Yes, they are my biological brothers and sisters, but they are more. Are they just people of my race, gender, religion, class, same ideology? Mm, more than that. So we are going to get some answers from the Lord Jesus Christ himself. So we're going to read an incident that happened to the Lord Jesus Christ in Matthew chapter 12, and we're going to read from verse 46 to verse 50. While he, the Lord Jesus Christ, yes, talked to the people, behold, his mother and his brethren stood without, desiring to speak to him. Then one said unto the Lord Jesus Christ, Behold, thy mother and thy brother or brethren stand without, desiring to speak with thee. But he, the Lord Jesus, answered and said unto him, that told him, Who is my brother and who are my brethren? Which is akin to the question we are asking ourselves. Who, is my, who, who are my brothers? Who are my sisters? Verse 49. And the Lord Jesus stretched forth his hand towards his disciple and said, Behold, my mother and my brethren. Verse 50 is very, very key. For whosoever shall do the will of my Father, which is in heaven, the same is my brother and sister and mother. For whosoever shall do the will of my Father, which is in heaven, the same is my brother and sister and and mother. Of course, of course, of course, the Lord Jesus Christ was not disrespecting or scorning his brother, his sister, and his mother. He was not denying them. He was not rejecting his biological family. Far, far be it. The Bible definitely clearly recorded for us his affection and his respect for his mother and his siblings. Now, the, 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 the point here is that of order of priority. Okay? It is the order of priority. The Lord Jesus definitely loved and respect his mother, definitely loved and respect his sibling. The point here is an order of priority. Indeed, his ties to his mother and his brothers were dear to him. But the business of his father, he said, I must walk the work of him that sent me. The business of his heavenly father was greater, far, far greater than any natural relations, than any natural consideration. Therefore, his disciples were more tender and secret. And obviously, his mother and his brethren will also become his disciples, okay? All right, so so when, the, when that question was raised by the Lord Jesus Christ himself, who is my mother? Who are my brethren? He said, you are his disciples. His disciple, you are my brother. You are my brethren, so, and my mothers. So this is also illustrated for us in his teaching that the Lord Jesus gave us in Matthew chapter 19, and we, we read it in some other part of the um, 
gospel. The Lord Jesus said that we ought to forsake father and mother and friend and house and land and be his follower. And that is Matthew chapter 19 verse 20. Again, we are talking about priority now. Remember, we are asking that question. Who are my brothers? Who are my sisters? So all disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ, those who do the will of our Heavenly Father, no matter their class, no matter their gender, no matter their race, no matter their color, they are my brothers. They are my sisters. Now, this is another level of who my brothers, who my sisters are. So we've talked about my biological brothers and sisters. We've talked about those people in those special group that we've talked about, the voiceless, the weak, the widow, the orphan, and things like that. So that is another level. This is another level of those who are my brothers and sisters. But there is another level. And we read that in the parable of the Good Samaritan that is recorded for us in the book of Luke chapter 10, and it's in verse 25 to 37. Luke chapter 10, verses 25 to 37. Now, I'm not going to go through the whole story. Now, that, that is not what... I am intending to do here, okay? But I'm just going to give us an outline. The issue here is for us to answer that question, who is my brother, who is my sister? So the story started out with a scribe who came along to test the Lord Jesus Christ and he asked him about what he must do to inherit eternal life. That is what kicked off the story and that is what ended, as it were, in the parable of the Good Samaritan. So this man asked the question. The Lord Jesus then turned the question back to the scribe. The scribe responded with the command to love the Lord and to love our neighbor as ourselves. And the Lord Jesus agreed with him. The Lord Jesus affirmed his response. But the scribe was not done. He wanted to show how smart he was and he asked the Lord Jesus Christ, who is my neighbor and that is what actually key us into the question we are dealing with he said who is my neighbor and it was at this point that the lord jesus christ responded with the parable of the good samaritan now again like i said i'm not going deep into this event or neither am i going deep into this parable but this is essentially the outline of the parable there was a certain man he was in trouble literally this man was dying because he's been attacked by bandits by robbers a priest came saw him he was lying there in a pool of blood dying a priest was passing by saw him but passed the priest passed on the other side then a levite came took a look at him but he also passed <laughs> passed him on the other side but then there came a certain samaritan the bible tells us and this samaritan got involved with this man and took care of him then it is the question that the lord jesus asked next that is very relevant to us in this teaching luke chapter 10 verses 36 to 37 i'm reading from the message translation the lord jesus asked this question he said what do you think which of the three became a neighbor to the man attacked by robbers the one who treated him kindly, the religious scholar responded, Jesus said, go and do the same. Now, this is the question that we are dealing with here today. Who is this man true neighbor? And this is the lesson from this parable. Our neighbors are anyone in our proximity. Our neighbors are anyone in our proximity. Proximity where I'm living, proximity where I'm working, proximity when I'm on the road, Proximity, wherever, whenever, our neighbor, my neighbors, are those in my proximity. They are the one I can show love and kindness to. My neighbor can be the one in my proximity online, on that chat room, or on that online course. That is my neighbor. Anyone in my proximity, emotional proximity, physical proximity, virtual proximity, actual proximity, they are my neighbor. They are the one I can show love and kindness to. And those are my brothers. And those are my sister. Of course, this is not the way of the world in which we live. This is not the way of Cain. This is not the way of the world in which we live today. The world we live in today is so divided, it is being destroyed from inside. And this all started when we rejected God back in the Garden of Eden, but also it is propagated by every generation that keeps on rejecting God. This is the way of evil. 
in the world in which we live today. Now, we have we have gone through some of this issue talking about the world, its ideology, its rejection of God. So I'm not going to go through all that again. So what we are saying is that we have seen three or four illustrations of who our brothers and sisters are. Number one, we've talked about those in the special group. You remember the weak, the voiceless, the orphan, the widow. Number two, we have talked about those of the household of faith. Number three, we've talked about our biologic brothers and sisters. And number four, we said, indeed, all human are our neighbor. And our God has brought us into proximity with some of those human so that we can show the love and the kindness of God to them. Now, Paul put it this way in Galatians chapter 6, verse 10. Galatians chapter 6, verse 10, and I'm just going to read from the Amplified Classic. Galatians chapter 6, only reading verse 10. So then, as occasion and opportunity open to us, let us do good morally to all people, not only being useful or profitable to them, but also doing what is for their spiritual good and advantage. Be mindful to be a blessing, especially to those of the household of faith, who those who belong to God's family with you, the believer. So you can see, you can see actually, how those things tied up together and this is what it means this is what it means when the bible says that these are my brothers these are my sisters so if we ask those questions who are my brothers who are my sister remember those four level those in the special group you know number two those of the household of faith number three your biological brothers and sisters obviously will involve your mother and your father and indeed it also involves every single human being remember those three questions we encounter in genesis chapter 4 verses 9 to 10. now let's read it again and the lord said unto cain number one question where is abel your brother okay where is abel your brother and then cain said i know not we know he was lying and cain asked the second question am i your brother's keeper and the answer to that is duh yes Cain <laughs> you are your brother you are your sister's keeper just in case then you want to be smart and say but who, who are my brothers who are my sister yes they are those orphans yes they are those widows yes they are those weak those voiceless those are your brothers those are your sister number two though they are also the people of the household of faith number three they are also those people your biology brother your biological sister and finally indeed all human are your brothers they are your sister so king said am i my brother's keeper and yes king you are your brother's keeper then verse 10 and the lord said what has thou done that is question number three the voice of thy brother's blood cried unto me from the ground. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So those are the three questions now. We have gone again looking at the second question today. Next week, by the grace of God, we will look at the third question. What has thou done? Okay. What has thou done? And if you are listening to me tonight and you've not received questions, Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. I want to be your keeper. I want to be my brother and my sister's keeper. Listen to me. If I don't tell you the truth, then I hate you. Then I'm not being a keeper. If I honestly think that you are heading in the wrong direction, if I honestly feel that your opinion is leading you to a place of destruction, should I still respect that opinion? Should I not at least mention it to you that you are heading in the wrong direction, that there's danger in the direction that you face, and that, you know what, maybe you need to consider this, and that this is an alternative. There's a way that seems right to people, but the end thereof is a way of death. God has provided a way out. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. You don't have to perish. I don't have to perish. We can come to God today and ask him to save you, and he will. It will take the heart of evil out of you and give you a new heart. And you will become a member of his family. You will become 
a mem a citizen of his kingdom and then he will work with you you'll begin to grow in your knowledge of him and then you can also be your brothers and your sisters keeper and when this is all over we will spend eternity with him in the new heaven and the new earth do it right now